record, all right? <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the October 11th of 2024 Long Range Planning Committee meeting. Uh, let's see. I guess we start with roll call. Roll call. Yeah. So, Alan Paul? Here. Rick Cheney? Present. Peter Freilinger? Here. Uh, Robin Saunders? I don't show her yet. Portia Hirschman? Yeah. Uh, Judy Fisher? Here. Rachel Hendrickson? She's not here today. Um, Jean Marie's? I don't think she's here today. And John Anderson? Here. And the next item on our agenda this morning is to review the minutes of August 9th. And 2024. I think it should say September 13th. It should a, say September 13th. Yeah, that was a typo. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so disappointed. None of you caught it. Yes. <laughs> Doreen caught it yesterday when I pulled all the prints off the computer. Yeah. Well, the minutes are correct. Yeah. The minutes are correct. Just the date so, on my agenda. Yeah. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? And I will abstain. I was not at that meeting. <clears throat> <clears throat> Item number three is to consider and discuss a, re a request to review landscape uses in the Rural Farm Zoning District. Autumn, can you kick us off? Sure, thank you. So we looked at this a little bit in December of last year. Let me share my screen. So, uh, did this come before the zoning board? Um, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. I remember so he has the a address. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> give me one second. In order to see the screen, I'm going to read yeah, okay. okay. Sure. Yeah, I went back to my December minutes and I didn't have anything about this because I figured I could review it. <laughs> it was. Um, it was a last pretty minute ahead. quick okay. conversation. Uh, our committee makeup was a bit different too. You may recall Marvin was really right. adamant about. Yeah. yeah, it seems like a good idea, but we don't have time for this. Right. Um, and that was okay. pretty much where we left it. Okay. But um, Paul has asked us to reconsider it, and we had talked a little bit about. I had thrown out there that it would be possible you could add in some. Uh, landscape uses and then put some performance standards around them for size. You wouldn't certainly wouldn't want landscape uses on every RF property in town, but well, I can, uh, within the, some certain parameters, the, perhaps. The the and just to give some color on the well, um, zoning board um, discussion. The zoning board really was sort of surprised that this was not an allowed use mm -hmm. within this. Um, the only thing that we could kind of figure out is that floriculture. Might bring up bring to mind things like O'Donnell's Farm, which has a lot of parking, a lot of transportation. But your uh, yours was not that, and it's perfectly in our purview to put some performance there. To your point, mm -hmm. that this is a wholesale would be wholesale horticulture operations, wholesale um, lands, support of landscape operate wholesale or um, uh, off-site landscape operations, that sort of thing. That that would make this just like almost any other um, agricultural or growing use in the RF districts. So I'd be very supportive of something like that, where you just make sure you don't end up with an O'Donnell's nursery. Um, so you're not, you, you, you don't allow parking, much in the way that we have the home business performance standards in the RF districts, which don't allow for signage, parking, things like that. One to that end, um... Let me just ask, what's wrong with the nursery and the RF if you had 50 acres? Parking. Parking. Yeah, parking. Really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you would have to go through a site plan process. Right. It's just me kind of, yeah, no, you know. You're, you're, you're right. It's, it, but um, again, that's why we have the performance standards for yeah. the home businesses in the RF district as well. So I was just thinking, I'm always thinking we have the majority of our town is zoned to RF. Mm -hmm. And right now, all you can do in RF technically is a, you know, a working farm or two acre home lots. It, so I'm you it, uh, no. Okay. So I'm always looking for other things that you could possibly do to diversify. So there's maybe not so much residential pressure, 
but there may be some other options. It's just some yeah. interesting conversations. Be, you know, a nursery just seems uh, like an appropriate use. My, and again, my, my greenhouses. Yeah, I, I and mean, you can do because you can do greenhouses. It's the retail yeah. part of it that's the tricky part, like and, Peter said. And part of the retail part being tricky is that while yes, all most of the town is RF, the roads in the RF don't usually have shoulders. Don't have a, a, a lot of like you think of McDonald's Nursery, um, and it's on twenty two. Mm -hmm. um, you think of Broadway Gardens; they have substantial parking that they have to provide, mm -hmm. and things like that. I think that's. The concern I would have, where that's not really the character of the RF districts that we like, but the idea that you're growing something, mm -hmm. that you've got trucks coming in and out that are moving things, that strikes me as being very much in line with the agricultural uses of the RF district. Now, so. well, let me throw out something else, because as you talk, I'm thinking about the um, high-rise growing thing in uh, Westbrook. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would that be precluded? Yes. Okay, because it's a building. Well, you could do a building. I mean, I'd have to look at it. Do they have any? Because I mean, maybe I'm maybe a second guess. Two hydroponics and, and uh, it would be. I don't think it'd be straightforwardly allowed. Yeah, that would be. That's a really think but about. I throw that out because yeah. people are saying, okay, it's a smaller, sure, um, small footprint. scale footprint. Yeah. Um, I think that would fail the test because that's also got. A three-story parking garage and a retail and this use attached to it. Mm -hmm. But if it were just the box of the hydroponics, then and you use geothermal, you could kind of read into this. You could do the commercial agriculture, agriculture yeah. as long as you're not doing the other stuff. It's the retail sales and services that's not permitted. That's the tricky part. Um, I have a question. Is is there anywhere within town regulations? for the rural farming district that deals with invasive species? We have um, not directly, no. We no, have landscape we, requirements that, <clears throat> and then we have invasive species issues uh, addressed with our shoreland and resource protection zoning. So don't we have a, a um, a list of allowable species. Uh, which... And that only applies when you come in for a site plan. Right. So okay. we don't we don't regulate not going out of homes and forests yeah. and things like that. No. I actually yes. Um, does the state Department of Agriculture or um, the DEP have regulations on what you can and can't store in terms of plant types or species on site or things like that? Um, I'm not sure about that. Okay. I do know that the USDA defines horticulture as agriculture. That's just smaller scale agriculture. The state does, to your point, they do have a list of do not sell, do not grow. Yeah, kind okay. Of, okay. Um, gotcha. plants. So no. that would probably be. Thank yeah. you. Would this include bees? Um, <laughs> well, you could still, you could have bees in RF. You can have bees yeah. kind of wherever. But I mean, if you, but if, if you can't if you sell your bees and you wanted to sell your honey, could you, you in fact open up a you could have a small stand. farm stand that's 400 square feet or yeah. less. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you um, and then you can have an agricultural product store, I believe it's a thousand square feet or less. Um, you can't yeah. have on road signage, you can't have sandwich boards if you want to, and you can't have more space for more than I think one employee <laughs> and two parking lot. Parking it's limited. it's yeah. kind of like having a little farm stand at yeah. your house. Yeah. Kind of I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to think of some applicable yeah. uses yeah. that okay. people might. Actually we exploring. Brian Longstaff and I are continually talking to people who want to do things in RF, and that's why I'm, there are some retail sales and services that just may be appropriate given certain situations, not in a neighborhood or things like right. that, because there are a lot of established neighborhoods too in RF. But do, do we have any like apple orchards in town? I'm not aware of any, but they would be permitted. They would be. Yeah. Because I'm thinking of Peter's parking again situation. You want me to pick. Yeah. We don't have any, I don't think we have any of those, the big ones where you go and yeah. no, I don't think so. And it'll be 20 years before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think we have yeah, any of that. that picking, but but it's we don't have like any Libby's or anything like that, you know, where yeah. people are actually yeah. coming and parking and stuff. If okay, and so what's cool about that, if we did have that, they could apply for a temporary event parking. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, that we allow up to 30 days you could use it and it's a in that way they wouldn't have to pave 
uh, we did create that last year. So that would that okay. would work for that. And the current definition of agriculture includes hay rides, corn mazes, mm -hmm. agritainment, which is a new word to me. It wow. is. Oh. <laughs> it's the word that my predecessor came up with to allow like barn weddings and whatnot. Gotcha. So it's what that word is. Yeah, what? Like a barn wedding. Oh. A hoedown. Yeah. <laughs> well, at Wolf's Farm, they have it. Yeah, they, they have, have a dance. venue. Yep. Yeah. So what, what's, the, what's the concern about nurseries? Because that just seems reasonable to me that that could be. I, the way question. I don't understand the concern other than it's just the parking and retail sales and yeah. maybe just being appropriate. But they've got the land. Yeah. The, 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 the zoning board was confused by it. Uh, we, we weren't sure why this would not have been a use included under the commercial agriculture. Yeah. But is, this, is your nursery wholesale? Yeah, my the nursery that we have on property is strictly for plants that we are carrying to a client's property to yeah. to right. which again you'll have truck traffic but that's just like the truck traffic you'd have at any other farm or that's right anything like that so yeah. you know just it it seems like the zoning board had had two thoughts one is that why are we even dealing with this because this is agriculture so mm -hmm. this should be even be uh, appeal. the other one would be of course we'll uh, 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 approve the appeal and um, is there a language we could slip into here and into the zoning, or is this a one off? And therefore, as a one off, we, we will do it as what if I can be straightforward? I think Paul is wanting it to be defined as an agricultural use so he can do the other things that go along with agricultural uses because yeah. there are accessory uses that I, exactly he really can't do now because he's a special exception. Okay. So, we're he's requesting just to be classified as an agricultural use so he can do housing for employees and things like that that come into play and like how many acres do you have for four so yeah so you're you're exactly right yeah, so yeah. i you know when i when i first purchased the property i wasn't super familiar with this process but i was told that i needed uh, an exception to operate my mm -hmm. landscaping company there i wanted to do that i thought that was the path of least resistance even though i felt like i could mm -hmm. argue that i was within these conforming standards but i didn't realize is that that would put up a roadblock for me in the future um because now that i have a non-conforming use i want to do other conforming uses and the road frontage has been allocated to the non-conforming use so now i i just would like to remove that roadblock and you know have everybody agree that I'm, I'm doing this as a conforming use and therefore my site plan with other conforming uses on it will be able to make it to the next step. Now does the rural agricultural uh, zoning include housing for agricultural workers? Yes if you're a commercial agri we have a, a use for that. I'm a little confused by this if the bottom line issue here is interpretation of what particular use is under the ordinance, why are we discussing it? Isn't this a code? Of it's not an interpretation. It is a denial. We are. It's not allowed based on what we have. Okay. And so I'm asking you all if it would be appropriate to fix it. And in December, when I asked, nobody wanted to take it up. And so I reached out again. So I'll try again. Because you never know, it might well, be a different. Well, I think at time. December we did have a whole lot of stuff. We had that. some stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I would. It it feels like the room is like this is silly. Why why wouldn't it? So yeah. how about I go back and uh, draft up some language and bring it for you for next time and we can take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, because, fact, I think we should know. He just comment on parking. Well, and if that, the if this is going to be changed, right. The only common guess we had was yeah, that, 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 that parking was, and retail type issues, and, and it was really the retail type parking. So in and out, lots of in and out um, on the roads. And I mean, speaking to just your property, you live on or your property is on a weird little bend in broad turn, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which which would be potentially if you had a lot of retail traffic, that would be a, potentially a dangerous. Yeah. Um, uh, ingress onto onto a broad term, but that's not what we're talking about here. There's just never be clear. going to be an incentive for retail. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. But say there was. Say we did say, why don't we allow nurseries and RF if you have a certain amount of land and retail traffic? Those developments would come through the site plan process, 
and they would be required to do their traffic study and show mm -hmm. those impacts and mm -hmm. um, what kind of improvements might might have to be made. So well, I mean, I, I, again, though, I mean that that drills more to the heart of what's the RF district about mm -hmm. rather than which this one is this is what we you're not asking us that question. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is more for us. Um, but um, and, and and for that, yeah, I I I don't think the RF districts in Scarborough. People don't think of them as where you go for McDonald's or things like that. It, it's uh, we don't, and and I would be uncomfortable as a member of this committee kind of going full hog on that one. Um, even though for this purpose and to clarify that clearly horticultural mm -hmm. horticulture is a form of agriculture and therefore is allowed as part of the RF um, uh, conforming uses to me. Can you explain why you're uncomfortable with it? Because that's where yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm wondering comfortable. Well, <laughs> I, I, if, if I think about the, the rest of the RF districts uh -huh. in, in town, can you think of another large retail establishment that would have 20 or 30 parking spaces um, with continual um, uh, uh, entry or exit from that? What zone is Highland Ave Nursery in? Is, which one? What zone is Highland Ave Nursery in? Well, and uh, Highland, Ave, um, Highland Ave is... Number one, it's it's bringing father in. Number two, they 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 do have a lot of parking that they've had to establish. Um, number three, that's Highland Ave is more of a of a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's greenhouse space. No, I'm thinking the, the the Ave itself is oh. is um, is highly trafficked in a way that Broad Turn or Holmes Road or something like that are much more rural. Um, and uh, and if you think about where Highland Ave, Highland Gardens is, there it's across the old golf course. It's right at the edge of that big uh, of the of the broader Pleasant Hill neighborhood. Um, whereas the the neighborhoods and things in the broad turn side of town are not really neighborhoods. They're like subdivisions that they're kind of pokey little cul-de-sacs and things like at that. At the same time, if you think about the parking lots for the um, trailheads. They get a lot of in and out traffic, and they're fairly large. So, I uh, mean, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, right. I'm kind of like yeah. with John. I'm just trying to understand if if somebody's growing mm -hmm. appropriate things, mm -hmm. uh, what's the problem with the nursery? Yeah, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's more like I, I feel like it makes more sense to me, <clears throat> definitely on the western side of mm -hmm. ninety five versus the eastern. So maybe it like is there a way to be more specific that. It would be a qualified use for nurseries only on that part of town. Sure, you could put some performance standards in. I was thinking minimum lot size too, mm -hmm. so you wouldn't just, so that just immediately like eliminate. Um, there's some still larger parcels. Um, I don't know. I, it makes me think maybe we should have RF is really interesting to me because we have so much of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I had a, a, a it, comment for the end of the thing that I wanted to talk a bit more about the RF. We, we've talked before about sort of going through the, we wanted to first go through the villages and then mm -hmm. kind of talk about commercial standards and then talk about residential and then ultimately rural. But the RF district, unfortunately, John, is it's not differentiated across the yeah, other town. Probably yeah. need three districts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's what, it's what I'm going to get. Yeah. yeah. Like you could actually probably designate little nodes as RF plus, where maybe we at, allowed some retail, but it wasn't full on. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Per, uh, hotels and whatnot, and gas stations. Exactly. But it's a very yeah. limited village. And that's what I'm thinking for, like uh, around yeah. um, the, the Highland Ave or those areas. Mm -hmm. There's, We've actually had a request to switch RF some RF zone property to R two zone property, mm -hmm. which we denied. Um, all our town council to do it, I think, denied. Um, but uh, there are RF zones on this side of the turnpike, definitely that aren't as RF y. Yeah, as, not the like, same this one thing. feels like not very RF y. Yeah, but that's next <laughs> to D three and R two. And this, this when I think of RF, I think of West. right. Exactly. I think of West mm -hmm. Turnpike. Yeah. And, and you're on the RFE side of the yeah, you're the RFE. Yeah. <laughs> by, by like 200 feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can hear the turnpike, but yeah. Location, yeah. location. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, we for next time, I'll bring some language in to include horticultural uses. And then, is this a conversation we just sort of put on the shelf to talk about when we talk about all the other things? Yeah, no, the, <laughs> the, the, really... the, the parking conversation, I think we do kind of push back because um, that the, then we can be more. 
more nuanced in talking about what, what what is a rural use that would have a lot of that would be facilitate retail types uses versus zones which are really more almost the 30 for 30 green yeah kind of um, area which mm -hmm. we want to keep more quiet well and that actually you know what that's a great point peter maybe when we have the results of the 30 by 30 the open space plan yeah we part of that is to look at our zoning and recommendations and maybe then we could really go in and like find that. some yeah. pull out some pockets that may be appropriate uh, for something a little bit different and then that would directly address your trail heads you know, would be a different kind of Type of use than a retail commercial. Right, but you get the same kind of traffic, yeah, the same well, size of parking. And it's it okay. Would, we, we, we'd say that there might be a world issue where it's okay to have trailhead with parking for that, but that's the only kind of parking we really want available in that kind of a district. Kind of what so, how does this discussion we're having now affect them? <laughs> well, I just said that next time I'm going to bring in some language that we can okay. consider to add in horticultural uses to the agricultural uses and then get him. If it gets through the process, he would be commercial ag, and then he has all the benefits of that type of use. Is, is Higgins Beach Market in the IRF? No, it's in the, um, <laughs> what is it? It's a, it's the Higgins um, overlay. Oh, Higgins. it's part of R3? No, it's not R3. Yeah, there's another thing. Yeah, it's the, the, what is it called, CR1? It's a little pocket. Oh, that, that little, little that bit. Is yep. its own little thing. <laughs> Which is, uh, yeah. Uh, the one. <laughs> yeah, it's Higgins. It, Higgins Beach has a um, design standard based zoning district. Yeah, and it's part of it. Okay. What? Because I noticed that they're doing work there. Yeah, they're tearing the building down. Down. Well, really it down. But it was only a couple of months ago that we also talked, and I believe that was in the mm -hmm. RF. The uh, right on the corner of seventy seven. Yes. Oh, and well, Black our, Point the ice cream. Yes. Yes. Right. That's a farm yes. stand so, use. So that's actually going to council on Wednesday to add some a special exception process if you can't meet the fifty one percent sales. For that. Okay. So and the farm stand, I think, may want to make some changes to what they can what they can do there. Okay. I don't know. I already have an ordinance change going through for that. I don't know what you're talking about. This mm -hmm. young couple now owns the yeah. farm stand. Yeah. And I think they have future plans and that may change the nature of the farm stand itself. Then they need to come talk to me. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, I've been in contact. Uh, Sue Bailey Ferguson is running the ice cream. Mm -hmm. um, and then we talked a couple of weeks ago. She was talking about the couple that's doing the farm stand too. But yeah. yeah. They're getting married soon. <laughs> so, in speech. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So I think. For, so, actually, I think you can do it. Yeah. yeah I, just, I, I just wanted to mention I, I, you know, of course, I do have a sense of urgency here because my, my site plan has been fully on hold for a year over a year now mm -hmm. Sorry, um yeah. and i you know I, I would love to be able to move forward with that with the site plan review and everything because i'm looking to kind of improve that entire area um, with a keen eye on sustainability uh, which my company is all about um uh, but i can't do so without knowing or at least having a pretty good sense that i'm going to be able to add a couple of residential units or at least one residential unit on the property um, so certainly any you know obviously there there are some <clears throat> some things here that that create a larger discussion but really i'm just looking to yeah. hopefully have you know all committees agree that my use is well within what's allowed or at least right on the side of it um and i don't even think it's right on the side i think it's it's Definitively within what we would normally have thought had been interpreted as agriculture. So okay. this is, I think we would view, certainly, and I don't want to speak for everyone on this one, but I would view this as clarification that enables him, but it's not necessarily just because of his property. It's a clarification that we thought wasn't required, but apparently is. Yeah, and we can make that. Yeah. We, we will have broader issues that would not affect the future, you, what you're doing now, mm -hmm. but we do want to. Don't want to lose our own notes on making sure we're yeah that's the so. nature of the committee we deal with yeah. the the oh, macro and then detail. go out yeah. yeah so but we always want to consider the ramifications yeah. of yeah. what we're exactly. doing so yeah.
So the way it works, uh, if we come back and long range moves it out uh, in November, then it'll go to ordinance committee in December and then planning board or council planning board. So you're looking at February for an ordinance change that okay. would give you that. Could I simultaneously move forward no. with site plan approval? Is there any way to send drafts to the <clears throat> committees and have them at least talk about it and get? No. 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 Can we approve this offline so they can go to ordinance next month? There won't be an ordinance committee next month because we're receiving the new council yeah. and two members of the ordinance committee are leaving. Uh, I mean, sure. unless John can make sense of that. Unless you're fat, yeah. <laughs> I mean, both of you. Yeah. Is, again, like, I feel like this feels pretty inconsequential. So yeah. if this body is okay with it, if Autumn wants to just bring it direct to council, sure. given its inconsequential nature, from what I'm hearing, yeah, I, I'm fine suggesting and I can talk to the remaining counselors about just bringing us direct to the next council. Uh, okay, I I, I, think it, I don't yes, think it seems... it's entirely inconsequential. Okay. I think you have to understand. I think for what Paul has, it makes sense. But what it the change would allow is if I lived in RF, I could just suddenly have a commercial nursery in my backyard, and Alan's my neighbor. So that's why I want to put some performance well, standards around it yeah, for I, size I, and things. I, I, it needs some limitations. It, it, it doesn't need a lot of work. I just need to put some language together. Yeah, I okay. think it could still be fast tracked, but I just want you to. Yeah. There's it's, other nuanced things right. that go into it. it. We're not. If we were dealing with just you, it would be a different issue. But what we're trying to do is create a document or a, an ordinance here that would be effective and impactive of anybody who wants to do something similar. So that's why we have to make sure we follow process. Understood. Okay. I gotta right. change my mind. I think I have to do a few process after uh, autumn statement. Like it's gonna have to but we can try and figure out yeah how to... I can do that stuff. Yeah. So we can get it um what you I, can do is you can have everything ready to go. Um, and I'm happy to you could do a sketch plan. A planning board before it's done. Uh, I, I have that. I submitted that. If we had if we had a staff review of that, and well, that's where it came up. The, right. The <clears throat> but I can actually send it to the planning board to look at because they are they are the body that's going to approve your site plan. Okay. So um, and we can talk about that offline. That's you don't have schedules. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. I don't think you're looking at a lot of opposition here. Yeah, no, I didn't feel like it. Just yeah, process. Uh, just yeah. So, that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping to move it through as quickly as yeah. we understand. Thank you. I'll say from the zoning board's perspective too. I, I think we we did not anticipate that this would have precluded conforming uses, um, other conforming uses on the property. Um, so that that when we when we approved the non-conforming um use exception. We would not have assumed that it would place restrictions on type without hearing exist now. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't assume for the either. agricultural employee yeah. housing. Yeah. So um or any housing. It, this, I, I don't want to hold hold us up too much on that one, but I, I think that would be it might be helpful for the zoning board to be aware of what it actually is approving when non-conforming exceptions come up. Because and what that will preclude Limits. in the future. Yeah, that no, I agree. That's your point. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um I think. Thanks. Sorry about that. The zoning board certainly didn't anticipate that downstream consequence. So no worries. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, All right. I think we're good on this. Shall we move on to item Thank number four? Uh, consider and discuss a request to review the light industrial zoning district. Jim. Yes. Um, as I think most board members know, I represent the developer of the Beechridge Speedway project. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that this item is directly related to that project. So I'm um, thinking about shut <laughs> discussion. I will not, will not okay. participate in one way or the other. Um, would it be, um, I guess, would it, if we need a vote, we don't need one. We don't need one. All right, because I was going to say, should I move Judith into a voting role if that were to occur? I don't anticipate point of vote. order, I but um, I just am asking for direction. Okay. So. All right. 
We don't normally vote on direction. Yeah. No, I just. <laughs> you know, I think that would be up to you. Not knowing where we're going to end up, but. Judy. My parents Judy. only called me Judith when they were mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is also a request we've um, reviewed in the past. We actually uh, reviewed it in October of 2022, and I included the minutes from that meeting. Um, so the conversation was really um, about the light industrial zone at the time, the land that is adjacent to two rod and it having to get access from property off of Holmes Road if they were to be developed. Um, just really talking about the appropriateness of the zone and district. And I gave three options, uh, leave it as is, amending the language or the boundary. And at that time, we just moved forward with a change for no through truck traffic. And so we changed our traffic ordinance. And so no through trucks are allowed on two rod road. Since that time, the Beach Ridge Speedway project uh, has been moving forward. The FedEx proposal has been moving. It's almost a year now, uh, it's been in the works. Um, they are getting close to approval. I'm expecting probably in December, DEP will have their final permits uh, permitted and then planning board can give approval after that. But throughout that process, uh, you all have gotten uh, several attachments. We've been hearing from the neighbors concerns about the the infrastructure in the site, um, just the appropriateness of the district in general. And so just asking you all for some additional guidance. The FedEx project is fully in process um, and can't be stopped at this point is my understanding without major financial and lawsuit consequences, I suspect. So what I'd really like to frame that big conversation about is what we should do with the district with what's left and what's out there. And so um, I- let me, You have a picture? Yeah, that's what I was Thank just you. gonna say. I didn't send you guys a picture. So I, let me um, go to the map. The map. Can you also explain a little bit, Autumn, like there's an RF overlay on this or something? Sure. Like so it, the RF overlay says that if it's basically it's RF if you want to be RF. So you don't have to be light and industrial. It's sort of strange to me the way it's. Mm -hmm. um, the only zone where we... This is the only zone that's like that. Um, well, hopefully you got the 2012 rates or. or discussion points. Mm -hmm. um, Denise, you cannot see my screen right now, right? No, I can't. I just see everybody else. But while you're looking, may I say something? Or is that at another time? Uh, it's up to you, Alan. Okay. Are you still looking? No, I just I'm going to share my screen once I get the map pulled up, so she doesn't have to see all the clicking. <laughs> uh, uh, if it's brief, go ahead. Um. So, you know, as far as the FedEx project, you know this this project was across two different developers that picked up where the previous one left off, and the second and third developer picked up where the first develop developer. Um, started. Our big problem with this development is there is Holmes Road is posted, gets posted in the spring from the beginning of the Beach Ridge property all the way to the Saco town line. You know, back in that 2012 document that you have in front of you that was provided to me by one of my neighbors of a meeting, they, an informational meeting, you know, one of the recommendations by this specific committee was no trucking terminals because of road, you know, partly because of road conditions. Um, so we're not sure, and I have been raising this concern for three years now as to how any kind of large trucks business can be allowed when this road gets posted in the spring, 
Um, not to mention, they're now talking of a 24 hour operation. This abuts a residential area and it's highly inappropriate. Not to mention our water consumption, our water supply has reduced dramatically since Kennebago went in, um, Kennebago subdivision across the street. John, uh, while attending our neighborhood meeting, um, inspected our well. And we, at that time, had two feet of water left. So those are some pretty strong, um, you know, opposition from all, myself, my husband, and our neighbors that we would really like to take into consideration. So I, I just, um, you used a number of spe specifying terms there that I don't understand. So what is, where... On the map, on the map here, or maybe by street name, where is the posting taking place from? So Public Works posts the roads in the springtime. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is it's from the bridge to about right here. Or oh, to, to Rod, I think. But the FedEx development is reconstructing no, their entire um, frontage. They're reconstructing Holmes Road for the entire frontage way. That's why. So, so that's being... actually, just let me, sure. we actually, when they first came in, uh, the town engineer and I wanted them to reconstruct the entire way of Holmes Road all the way to the bridge. But the public works director went out there and said the road was in good shape um, up to their property. So they are only uh, responsible for improving the entire, they're going to dig it up, rebuild it, add shoulders. Okay. Um, so that is that. So posting, and we haven't posted in a few years because of the weather. Mm -hmm. um, but that's So, all. and again, I just want to be clear, that's not the two rod road though. It's not all the way to Rod Road. The I believe we posted it from. It's like back here, all the way back. Yeah, all the way. To yeah, Rod but okay. what the public works director cleared is that it's okay to not. Uh, it won't be an issue. Okay. We oh. also <laughs> this, and I, and I, I'm just gonna finish with the FedEx, and then sure. we move on. Maybe FedEx is also doing. They're on the hook to do some improvements on Payne Road. Mm -hmm. um, Holmes Road at the intersection. Uh, there's been some traffic review um, comments that they will be doing some things or contributing for improvements even for the northbound lane because mm -hmm. of the the change in timing coming north. The southbound lane will have a little bit of a delay, so they're on the hook for some improvements to that as well. Sure. I mean, I. I... <clears throat> Oh, no, I'm just mulling with the water. I actually remember when these came in for two. I have a good deal of sympathy for the discussions that have come up around two road broad road in terms of the traffic on that road, um, uh, the the nature of the neighborhoods and how the subdivisions occurred. Um, I think I think if anything that will be enhanced by the fact that there's that rugby club that's going in mm -hmm. um, on uh, over there too. That might have bring some yeah, traffic with yeah. it, but it's certainly a quiet use and the rest. That being said, most of this and this use was frankly was the the um, the uh, um, the speedway. Um, the speedway was loud. I mean, I could hear it at Blue Point four miles away as the crow flies, <laughs> um, and loudly. I mean, to the point where it was competing with Bailey's weekend um uh concert noise um uh, which was a quarter mile away um so there's i mean this has been used as a loud 24 nearly 24 7 um facility uh, facilities area for a long time um it, it, it's hard to see how it's nothing new um or it's hard to see how it's anything new um I, can I just, because I, I think that was my perception after meeting with the residents, the Speedway didn't operate 24-7. It operated a few months out of the year during a certain time period. So a 24-7 trucking facility is very different than what what was. And so I just, I, I thought that as well. And so I think after meeting with them and learning a little bit more about how things really operated, it is a big change. Yeah, I, I guess I and the environmental uh, mitigations as well that you're dealing with trucks. Well, but the you were dealing with a lot of environmental issues with the speedway too. Like if they were 
we do. The speedway was established at a time when um, and then oh, minimizing. I, I, I understand, <laughs> but suddenly, at John's point, you're taking something that was two months in operation, making it 24 7, which exacerbates. So, to that point, to bring us back, so the speedway is on this side, or I'm sorry, the speedway was here, FedEx is proposed to be in the front here. What we have remaining still in line industrial is this land here that's uh, heavily um, inundated with wetlands, but it's the live industrial. Now, this property development has to have access from wow. Holmes Road. Correct. And so part of the ordinance is that the this pro property had to uh, try to work with that adjacent owner to allow and they have succeeded in that there's some sort of allowance for potential access so this property would not be able to uh, gain access off two rod now it could be developed for single family homes or it could be developed as rf so that's that rf overlay they can still do rf things where they could go directly to two rod right where they could go to two rod now, then we have the existing salvage yard area, turn on, and then we have the homes in the area. And then this across the way, you, you are probably, they have an auction staged out there right now, yeah. uh, just cleared where they used to have parking. So these two parcels and these two parcels um, are really the ones that I think are coming to play, you know, that have potential moving down the road. The Light Industrial District has a uh, funny clause in it about you can only, you have to have public sewer unless you're only using 2000 um, MGD per day of water. So it's not a heavy water user can go in. Some things that I would think, you know, I don't know if you would consider if, if you were going to put if you were going to take light industrial away you'd put it back to rf that's basically your option there's no kind of the only option but are there uses that may be um appropriately stricken or tweaked a bit um for future you know i, I don't know what you all think about that but um i'm still concerned about water mitigation mm -hmm. because if people are on wells doesn't take long for well there's there's no water west of the turnpike throughout yeah. the whole i know yeah but I mean, i'm talking about people who are on wells who when you when you have environmental waste it can leach into those aquifers mm -hmm. so that that's that's well, but, that's the basis of my concern okay my this is Go ahead. Well, and, and I'm sorry to stand up. I just I will be saying that one or that one. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so and I can remember the conversation we had before. These two strike me as being kind of different in qualitatively different lots than these other ones in the around the salvage yard and, and things like that. Um, and these properties here on two rod, which are technically in the light industrial zone, seem like they were. And these are all single, little, not little, but they're single family small homes, yeah. um, uh, it, it, yeah. units. Um, yeah, this is still too much. Right. So these largely were people who, um, who the homes were built and the, and the property was subdivided for people who wanted to have cars that they would race at Beach Ridge. So there was sort of a there's there's a specialty aspect to some of these these houses that that was like okay I can understand that but. Not sure what we do with that in terms of how we're thinking about this as a light industrial zone moving mm -hmm. forward. I didn't realize that in the, these two blocks here um, that were blocks, but now are forests <laughs> as you change it. These two, I didn't realize these had wetlands in them. Mm -hmm. um, at a bare minimum, it strikes me that these two probably shouldn't be in a light industrial zone for exactly the reasons Porsche is kind of bringing up, which is they're they're close to the water table. Um, you wouldn't want to even have eligible development that close to the water table in an area where a lot of people are using well water. Um, and on top of which, it's already got kind of screwy dynamics for, I remember those weird, you have to access off of Holmes Road, you cannot have a road cut on Two Rod Road, um, that was verboten. Um, so it strikes me that these two being, re being brought back to RF makes perfect sense. Um, the rest of it though, and I'm kind of agnostic on these. It, it, I think these were probably included in the light industrial because they were already parking lots. Right. Um, so they're all just, it's all a legacy issue of the, of the speedway. 
Um, but if you take a look at this, I mean, this, this is not going to be easily usable so, um, uh, uh, development uh, or residential or future farm development area. Right. So it strikes me that, that the L1 zone makes sense, except for these two properties, um, which probably never should have been included. If they were always wetlands, they probably never should have been included in L1. That's true. Can, can you explain to Peter's point? So, because I just don't understand, like, why those other parts that are LI wouldn't work to go back to RF in the long term? This, are these? Yeah. So this is the town's landfill. We don't care. He could probably do whatever you want with that zoning. Um, this is uh, the auto salvage yard, and I believe he owns most of these parcels. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you were to ever sell, what I think what would be like? I if you went to RF, if you don't just try buying this mass, would there be a problem? Well, would there be a, a brownfield problem if you went to RF? I, I don't know. Because they have, Somebody well, would have to. That area has wells. Yeah, I just. I, <laughs> I haven't been on a well for many years. Like <laughs> uh, the assessment would have to be made. I'm not sure about. I'm sure there's probably some issues. I know we have some. Um, I used to hunt for auto parks there in high school. Our, I'm sorry. I used to hunt for auto parks there in high school. Yeah, like so five, I turned fifty two. Like to buy it. Yeah. yeah. That could be open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's where I feel like. Yeah. You know, I, I just, my concern would be adding another trucking terminal if that property ever sold. Right. And continuing to. Yeah. So, I mean, with this being light industrial down here, and if they do, in fact, uh, find a user, they're going to have to cross significant wetlands and do mitigation, but they could, in fact, add another trucking terminal, like a FedEx distribution warehouse in this area but using this access with the zoning as is. So that's why I'm thinking, yeah. Well, I, my, my biggest concern from the residents is the lack of water and sewer mm -hmm. over there and like how that, like this, allowing this to continue just feels like it's gonna continue to create issues mm -hmm. for the safety of all the people ordering that. And so my personal opinion would be, turn it all back to RF. And if ever there's public water that's brought over, then we could discuss in the future potentially turning into something you different. Could, you on the flip side of that, you could also do what we have in Running Hill. Running Hill has fantastic zoning, and then it has this in it that, eh, oops, just kidding, you don't have a sewer, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it really that's yeah. pretty much it's great, it's cool. Everybody calls and they say, look at this in it. You could add that call in, and you can leave the zoning as is, but take away the out for. Um, sewer and then add a water requirement that that's a reasonable i mean so that way and i don't know you know if the residents would see that as a benefit okay we're going to get another user but we're going to have water and sewer with that user that we can tie into Does well that... but are you isn't that approaching it very piecemeal rather than what i like your you're looking at it in a very holistic way <laughs> and it seems to me that if you're just looking at mitigation here and mitigation there, you're not really well. I'm addressing problems. I, I'm concerned from the town's standpoint of reducing what is allowed on the land now and the taking that that could be considered from a lawsuit standpoint. That's my where I come from. Like, ooh, down zoning property, you can do it. It's just it's a tricky space to be in sometimes. Again, and, and that's why I say. I, I'm looking just at those two parcels, mm -hmm. um, and and the fact that there are wetlands on it makes a material difference. I don't. I, there's a much less of a takings argument, given what you would have to do to mitigate mm -hmm. wetlands in the era where you can't do just I'll fill these in and build some wetlands over there anymore. Um, right. You know that that to me downzoning that has a lot less risk to it. And then the rest of the properties being continue to be zoned L L one. Mm -hmm. Come back to the you've got the historical fact that there has been, if not twenty four seven, and certainly it felt twenty four seven when you were trying to get to sleep some nights. Um, uh, 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 Beach Ridge uh, racing. That's because your windows broke. Exactly. Well, you know. <laughs> so let me ask you this: Would we also 
if we are going to do something with these two, you probably need to do something to what the residential yeah, yeah, lots yeah, too, that'd right? Be fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I wouldn't disagree with that. That's okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that came up before too. The 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 fact that that was the weird thing about the overlay to yeah. John, which is yeah, they were built with the idea that these are RF properties, but in fact they've got this overlay on top of it. Which is, what the hell is that? Yeah. So, um, yes, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. So then you would end up with this pocket of light industrial. But that pocket has historically been yeah. used. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that's what it would. Yeah. you know, you're just reducing the amount. Is there any danger from the light industrial use of um, leachate? Contaminated leachate uh, forming a plume that heads towards the residence wells. I'm sure. I, I I'm sure there is, depending on what what is out, what goes in. You no, know, the the one thing I when I look at that, the one thing that I believe is the case. I'm not an engineer in this area, but. When you consider the usage of the speedway and the ability of all of these racers to be able to uh, mitigate what they're leaving on the space, oil and stuff that was dripping mm -hmm. onto the ground, mm -hmm. and everything, you know, you get in accidents, you've got uh, radiator fluids, you've got all this other stuff that was coming down into this ground, mm -hmm. as opposed to the ability to have someone like FedEx come in and be able to do a much better job controlling environmental impacts. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think that that usage, and I'm not talking about traffic or anything else, I'm just talking about environmental impact. Mm -hmm. I think that someone like FedEx would be a lot better than the Speedway was in terms of environmental impact. Has, all right. That's just me. Has but. FedEx had to do? They, uh, they did all of their yeah, environmental they're assessment. Okay. Yeah. They're going through the Department of Environmental Protection for their permitting okay. and everything. That everything new has to do all that. The right, speedway I couldn't understand. exist. Yeah. The speedway couldn't exist yeah. today the right. way it was run. You know? Yes. Yeah. And so right. I, that I, I like so I like Peter's recommendation to change some of those back to RF. Yeah. I'd like the idea of adding something around limiting uses until there's public water and sewer to protect the 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 nature of that area. Um, what about the concept of, even though, again, it's not going to impact FedEx today, removing trucking terminals as a use and potentially removing marijuana, which has also been a concern expressed by the residents. Um, those are two things that I feel like I personally would like to see stricken from the zoning that I think prevent further expansion of trucking terminals in that area and um, you know, again, marijuana, I know, is a big concern sometimes, and again, because it's so close to the residents. That's been a concern that the council has been having to deal with. So thoughts on those two? When you say trucking, so you're talking about what's, um, I think what's currently referred to as distribution? Uh, yeah, this one, the truck. Yeah. Um, Has there any been has has there been any conversation with FedEx in terms of average size of vehicles? Yes, or... all that has been thoroughly vetted through the planning board. Okay, and continues to be. All right. <laughs> um, at some point, when you're on, to, I I know that you're trying to finish something up with what John said, but. I have a question regarding the colored map that you had up with the light industrial and uh -huh. purple. And I don't know if it's just a mapping issue or whether um, <clears throat> we have a very, very minor point to consider. Um, on that map, at the top of the map, when you had it up on the board in the RP area, mm -hmm. Just to the right of the RP is a small light industrial section, which yeah. 
<laughs> so the little triangle. Yeah. And my question is, is that actually Li? Or is that is should the Li be removed from that parcel? Uh, let me look at it. And then there's a little bit of RF in the parcel on the yeah. you know, other side. So I don't know if it's a map or a yeah. <laughs> yeah, that the one on the left is just zoning map issue. I just remember when we were going through from a CPEC perspective, mm -hmm. we tried to make the zoning, if you will, match property lines as much as we could. Yeah. So this is just one of those little tiny oh, things where silly. is this something that should be fixed? I can look into it. Yeah. Um, I have to go through with our GIS and figure out what it is. I, mean, I do think we're making changes. We should just. I think sure I can. Yeah, yeah just, just get it all. Yeah. No. While we're going through it. When you look at something like um, light industrial zone <clears throat> and uses, do you look at cumulative impacts as well as, so you're looking at the impact of the um, FedEx. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you also look at cumulative impacts in terms of what other uses might be made of the, that? Of the of that impacts as they relate to environmental. Well, not until so I didn't create the zoning. No, I understand. Um, and so yes, anytime you create zoning, you should really max them out. How many homes? I like I can tell you right now with some density calculations how many people can live in Scarborough with mm -hmm. our existing. So anytime you change zoning, you should. I'm not sure that was done in 2012. What happens through each individual site plan is that is. Um, taken into account. So everybody that comes in with an actual proposal, that's part of that discussion with planning board. So if you have FedEx and then you have other uh -huh. uh, trucking facilities, what's the cumulative impact? So their traffic analysis would be right. different because now they're taking in the FedEx tracking traffic counts and putting them with their proposal too. So what they may have to do to the roads and different, uh, there's stormwater. Stormwater, you have to contain right. it on your own side. So right. it's not necessarily key on the time. Right. So what else? I don't know what else you want me to address. No, I'm, I'm sort of thinking aloud. Mm -hmm. And that is that it seems to me that, that, that you really, I mean, the approach seems to me to be very piecemeal. I, I get that. That is town planning. I want to say we cannot, we, if we owned all the land, it would be very. I, I understand that. <laughs> you know, like, it's, yeah. It's a environmental impact I, yeah. statement, so I get I, that. I just don't, you've said this to me several times, and I don't think, I, I don't know what you want me to say. I, I think, <laughs> like, what I'm, what I'm hearing you say, and this is just my perspective on this too, it feels like, when the zoning was created, the focus tended to be on the fact that there was an existing speedway and that right. drove the choices and- And economic and, development yeah. desires for a light industrial area. And in my mind, where we are now, things we know now, values and things that have changed within the community. In retrospect, if I were involved in 2012, I would have said this should be RF if, if I knew what I knew now. Unfortunately, it is what it is, and FedEx at least has a qualified use to be there today, which is, you know, completely fair and they need to go through. But now the question is, is in 20 years, what do we want this to look like? There will be a FedEx building, right. um, but what, what do we want the rest to look like? And that's where I go back to, it feels like it should be RF or something until there's public water or things like that. Um, and I'm saying that based on the feedback I've been hearing from the community, where I think a lot of people on that side of town have expressed concerns about the growth, the development, the impact. And so that's just me trying to represent what I'm hearing from the public at large that, you know, they wish that was would have been our end. But if I, we're supposed to end now, was that that? No, 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 no. Okay. No. We don't know what the bell was. <laughs> oh maybe maybe yeah. i bet that's so we're a long-range planning committee and we seem to be dealing with stuff as it comes up what 
can we make recommendations to the planning board for um, how different zones might be looked at? I mean, what so is our, our, our role is to look at the different zones and then we make recommendations to ordinance committee and town council. The planning board's role is to implement what the book says. What the ordinances are. The, the planning right. board is very like thou shall. And then this right. is the should we group. And then we do get specific requests because the thou shalls don't work for them. Right. And so we, we consider it like the gentleman earlier. Right. But then we also put pins and things like let's talk about retail and RF for the future. That's the long range planning part of it. I, so I have a question for Rick. And Rick, this is unrelated to I the Speedway project. All right. I'm trying to take you back in time with CPIC and the implementation of the 2006 comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. because I'm assuming that that is when this zone may have become LI. Do you recall back then as to whether this area that we're discussing was LI at the time? Or did CPIC go through its process because of the 2006 comp plan and turn that area into an LI area? You recall? I don't specifically recall. This was rezoned in 2012. Yeah, right. But yeah, as but a, that would have was, been about the time CPIC was, yeah, was doing its thing. It was supposed to be in response to the need for additional, you know, that was a different time. Yes. And light industrial and those sorts of things was an economic boom, yep. if you will, about that. We were looking for more land to yep. do that with. And I think the land and is then, based in the pain road and, then, and the developing yeah, I, um, and big trying to, space and things like yeah, that. Yeah, and then trying to do something with the speedway, too. Yeah. I'm taking just, all yeah. that into consideration. I was just trying to see if Rick remembered I mean, that what we did at the time. CPIC mm -hmm. was formed, as you may recall, to implement Correct. the recommendations in the 2006 comp plan. plan. The CPIC eventually morphed into the long range yep. planning committee. Right. But CPIC was made up of people who were on the 2006 long range planning Plan. group. Yes. Said, yes, I'm willing to yeah. continue. And there were a handful of us that formed the CPIC, which was a recommendation in the 2006 plan. Right. Form a committee to make sure all these recommendations. Yep. And then we started working on working on. And I don't recall exactly when the council said, you know, we really need a long range planning committee. Yeah. But, well, it was. But anyway, I don't recall. The, okay. All I know was it was adopted. In, yeah. Well, I remember adopted. being on CPIC, and, but I don't remember the specifics about this area. So I, don't know what I, I just was trying to see if there was what something that might help in that yeah. regard. Well, I think I think for what it is, it made sense probably at the time. And again, I think from a long range perspective, I think the question is, is is this still right or does it need to evolve based on tweak? Yeah. Well, I think I think well, the, I really like your suggestion. Yeah, my, my my thing is I think it needs to be tweaked, but the fundamental reality is where the speedway was, where the um the town dump is, where the uh um salvage the salvage and again I encourage you to go to the salvage yard. It's a it's a peach. Um that's gonna be light industrial for the end of all time. Whether we like it or not, whether we would have planned that or whether mm, we would just what happened. It's just what happened and it's now that that is the long range. Um those other parcels that we we're talking about um, you know, I think we, I think those are RFs and, and, and the, you know, we're in a position to do that with a strong argument that this is not a taking for those two larger parcels. Um, and, uh, and, and then, um, I like the idea of what you suggested about cutting out some of the, um, uh, the, the outs for limited water use where, no, we're not going to do that. We're just going to require water and sewage. Mm -hmm. Um, and part of thinking about that is, um, you know, I know that the folks are concerned about the reduction in their well water, but they mentioned the Kennebago Drive development that went in. That can happen in RF2 anyway. Yeah. 
I mean, they're, they're, they're not removing that risk by simply dealing with the, with the FedEx there, facility or anything else. Down there's on. actually more potentially what you could probably have an additional 20 wells on Easily. the RF right. side. On the right. RF right. side, with, which, industrial. which yeah. has right. nothing to do with the LI, and that's yeah. going to drain yeah. the grid. Yeah. They're yeah. lucky yeah. that that um, uh, rugby facility is going in, protecting that plot from right. potential development. Um, but that's luck. And uh, the RF2 would allow folks to, to do that. So I, I really can't help them on that one. Yeah. I don't think we as a group can help them on that. On the amount of water. My concern is the, is the pollution of the water. And the pollution mm -hmm. of water, I think, is already yeah. probably baked in. I mean, you know, the pluming conversation, that, 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 that's a long term impact that, that would have started back in the 50s when I was dropping radiator fluid in the ground. Right. So, um, and, 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 if, and that's really how long it's been going on. You're right, different values, different times, but yeah. nevertheless, it is what it is. The, the one thing you said, though, and I, this was a comment that the residents made, too, was like, what, because this is our only light industrial, mm -hmm. like, what? what is that? Because, again, I think from their perspective, the way they shared with me that they interpreted that is probably more in alignment with bottom of our B3 zone, uh, our business zoning, because they were saying, like, yes, having a, you know, a dog salon. Well, that's there. that's just retail sales and services. Okay. Light industrial is mostly in today's terms, you can have some tech, some mm -hmm. big warehouse with a lot of manufacturing going on inside. So you don't really know. You know, light industrial meat conjures up a big, a huge tilt wall. Distribution to me actually feels more like heavy industrial. <laughs> light industrial doesn't. Where I'm from, industrial is everywhere. And yes. light industrial is a tilt wall building that a lot of cool things are happening inside and not a lot of impact. And there's some trees around oh, it. Yeah. And the then area at and, the bounds, it's interesting. Yeah. The, innovation district the is innovation light industrial. The um, oh, and then okay. in, I actually worked at a trucking company in college. That is a heavy industrial area, trucks in and out, you know. Because um, my, my, my thought it is, um, of light industrial versus heavy, heavy would allow a foundry, it would allow a chemical mm -hmm. plant, would allow mm -hmm. um, allow things with much more intense more environmental intense. use, yeah, um, and, and environmental impact than simply hardscaping a surface and putting in some buildings, which is really what distribution ends up being. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so I, I think I would agree with that as long as you have just their one distribution. But say you had two hundred acres of distribution, then it really becomes. Yeah, heavy. And well, you know, it, size. It, why? I was thinking like a liquor distribution. You know, where where you where you just have a building and you're just moving out. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, goods to various liquor stores. Again, it's not a heavy use necessarily, but you still have some traffic. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you had a 200 year facility, now you're starting to get into. Do we have some? Um, do we have uh, site coverage limits? Um, because if you had 200 acres. Of, and five lots, and each lot had a 50% site coverage building, then it's still pretty light industrial. It would still be light to me. Whereas in a, a heavy industrial zone should allow more or less 100% coverage because that's how facilities work. Um, and maybe that's something we could consider because, yeah, this is idiosyncratic. The light industrial is only this little blue triangle, so we can have a lot of flexibility <laughs> on things and changes yeah. to it. Um, now, I don't think we're going to locate a refinery, but in the um, the industrial park off of Route 1, um, you could build a refinery in theory down there. Um, I mean, there'd be environmental limits, but a lot of I don't think there. you could do a refinery without a contract zone. I don't think that's allowed by right either. I don't think. Gotcha. Yeah, but, you know, but, you, but yeah, because exactly. I, I think the Abbott Labs plant down there that's that's a factory in my opinion. Yes, that's yeah. manufacturing. That's, ma that's, yeah. that's heavy mm -hmm. industry. And that could go in this district because it's manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the same. Yeah. So where are we? <laughs> are the two lot the two big lots are has there been interest? Yes. Okay. So, so right. that's where impact potentially to the town in terms of lawsuits comes into play. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what, what happened, but okay. there's been interest shown, yeah. The okay. company's okay. actually bought it. No, someone owns it. Okay. And they no, bought no, it with no, development. No, no, there's no site plan. We have a draft site plan I'm seeing. It was one of the locations that was actually considered for the school. And again, I don't know what's going to happen with the next school, but that could be a parcel that they may want to explore too for 
fourth school or something. And then but, talked about water problems. Yeah, right. Well, that right. was part. That was partly why it came off the yeah. list was because of the lack of public water. Well, and, and and again, what I remember from the last conversation here on those two properties was that requirement that you have to have homes roll road egress only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and you cannot make road cuts on the two road 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 effectively made those properties exactly. very limited value economically, except for FedEx. Except for FedEx came in and now they have worked that out because it's required as part of our site well, process. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> in, in, in that sense, my guess is those yeah. properties still have much more valuable to FedEx than to almost any other owner because you're driving through FedEx property to get to your property. Well, they've done it so that it's a separate easement area. It's not going through FedEx property. It doesn't have to be. It FedEx. doesn't have to be. No, no, I, but, but you'll think about it. It, it will feel like you're driving through yeah. FedEx. You know, it's like the um, it won't. post office road on. You know where the little house is there? Um, mm -hmm. So FedEx's entry is much closer down towards two rod at the corner. And that little house area is where the easement is shown to so get to the back. So it would be a separate, like, separate there's a curb cut there and it would be a separate yeah. way that would be completely outside of the FedEx fence. Because FedEx will be completely fenced off. And so it'd be on FedEx is a lot. Yes, but, but it's it will a be separate an area that was separate. May I say something? Just one moment, please. Okay. I'll be, I'll be getting to public comment in just a few minutes. So it sounds like um I'll bring back for next time what it would look like with those two lots and the residential lots rezoned back to RF, mm -hmm. a couple of uses stricken from line industrial, and then a couple of uh, the get out of sewer clause stricken, and then I'll put in the same clause that we have in running hill about water. Okay. And then you guys can take a look at that. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to move on. Oh, or, oh, yeah. or yeah, well, next sure. Thing is next, next, that's next why I was. <laughs> so at this point uh, in our agenda, we are at a public comment center uh, uh, placement. So if you would like to have a comment, please do so now. Thank you, Denise Hamilton to Rod Road. Um, part of the ordinance with giving internal interior lots access to Holmes Road indicates it has to be a shared curb cut. This would not be a shared curb cut if those two lots were to be given a um, easement. It would be a dedicated curb cut only used by those two lots and not FedEx. Um, FedEx, fact, uh, FedEx currently that. has two curb cuts on their plan. One is their main access, and the second one is for emergency access only. Um, so I'm not sure how, you know, obviously changing them to rural farming would eliminate that issue. Um, I'm not sure if I'm getting feedback or someone's trying to talk, sorry. Oh, Denise, um, that would come up when the property, if it remained line industrial and they came back through the site plan process, that would be addressed. Right, right. And if it goes to rural farming, then it's irrelevant. Yeah. Is that it? Um, I had something else, but unfortunately, this time I didn't have things written down because I'm out of state. So, <laughs> but um, I appreciate you folks hearing this. Um, you know, our our biggest our concerns were, um, you know, the the public um, the the abutter notification was not followed during the entire <laughs> ordinance process. Um, and she's talking about 2012 is what she's okay. referring to. And I, I'm going to say that everything that I found said the process was followed. So I'm going to continue to disagree with that. Later. Okay. Well, I don't know. I had acknowledgement from John that the abutter notification was not provided per the statute. Um, but it's not required to be kept on file, but I have that. It's okay. 
but the you know long range planning made recommendations um and based on the comprehensive plan and a lot of that was thrown out the window um and it's there's uses here that i appreciate that you know are seen maybe not necessarily now you know this was created long before scarborough downs was probably even a figment of anybody's imagination of occurring um, that's created all this traffic and safety concerns for the Payne Road, Holmes Road area. There are multiple accidents weekly on Payne Road. Um, and, you know, I know right now we have, we do have a, a traffic calming study in the works um, for Two Rod Road um, to look at that. But, um, you know, again, I appreciate you hearing this and entertaining uh, changes, um, you know, for this area. You know, our real estate values are going to be significantly impacted by the FedEx building. We've already had two real estate agents come in um, looking at our properties and giving us their professional opinion um, and during each phase of the development, our real estate values are going to be reduced. And we have all worked very hard throughout the years to improve our properties and improve our neighborhood. And we are going to suffer by having a development like FedEx and anything else that may go in there. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is staff updates. And before I give Autumn the floor, I will stretch staff and include John. Comments? Okay, one thing. Well, the one thing um, for awareness, we are updating our TIF CA policy to add an affordable housing component. And one thing I would really like to see, and I would like to create a council goal and maybe partner with you guys in the Housing Alliance on what that could look like for next year around how do we want to, or is there anything strategically we want to do to develop affordable housing TIF districts more to encourage affordable housing what in certain parts of town? For? It's a tax increment financing. So essentially it just gives us the opportunity to um, create areas where we could give some incentives or help, you know, mm -hmm. contribute to allow for affordable housing projects. Mm -hmm. We could do it for economic development which is like what we did for the downs, but mm -hmm. we can also do it for areas where we want to better enable or incentivize affordable housing projects. Um, this workforce and? It could be both. Okay. Like I, I I just, I feel like there's an opportunity for us to have like a real hard conversation around oh, that absolutely. and how yeah. we enable that yeah. from a zoning perspective where we want to create incentives. And so I don't know what the answer is, but I would like to explore that with probably the committees next year to see if there's something we can come up with. You may want to add SEDCO to that? SEDCO as well, yeah. But you're, could I ask, being a comment, because there's something I wanted to bring up um, at the end here that relates, that now kind of has a recognition of this. We, we've talked a bit about sort of our priorities as a committee, including looking at the um, town and village centers um, and kind of doing a study potentially on, on Oak Hill um, mm -hmm. and um, doing some prioritization work. And this, it's actually your your um uh, your uh your about or Judy sorry Judy about <laughs> um about uh, sort of what the nature of our, our role is. I'd like to see us get back to to that sort of focused study on the town and village um uh a study and this is exactly where yeah. we would enter this mm -hmm. kind of discussion on the use of of, of TIF financing within those villages because that's a natural place to place yeah. workforce and affordable housing is within these town and village. Um, uh, uh, construct mm -hmm. and so, transportation. Yeah. Yes, the reason I, was I say that is because uh, connectivity, both mm -hmm. in terms of pedestrian and cycling, but also looking for transit connection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so, for employment, do you yeah. need transportation to employment hubs? It's yeah. a big thing we need to unpack, and it's a big yeah. thing we need different committees. So I don't. Again, I'm. Sounds like there's interest in like figuring out how do we scope and shape something that's actionable that we can work with. Yes. different committees to explore but well, I, think I would love ideas because i i don't have the specifics i just feel like there's something we need to do and i don't know i, I don't agree. agree 
Right. And and I think we're going to have a little bit of a of a not a break here, but because the we're going to have significant turnover on council change in um, subcommittee um, membership and probably some ramp up in getting people up to speed because um, we've got some pretty new members that will definitely come on board. Um, we have an opportunity, I think, as a committee to do some focused work in the next probably three or four sessions. Yeah, that would be really helpful. Because um, I, 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 I'm going to, I'm just going to. Yeah, I can see you the all look of, show up for an hour and a half once a month. Yeah. And the focused work is actually my workload. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't have a planner right now, so I'm doing all of the things. Um, so don't over over no, promise no, me to, <laughs> don't overcommit me to changing the world yet. <laughs> what is it, what is the progress on the planner? We don't have one, but you're in a surge. Yeah, we've been in a surge okay. since Eric before Eric left. Um so it's a hard, there's not a lot of planners in Maine, unfortunately. I have one candidate um, that we're supposed to interview in the next few weeks. Sorry, I didn't want to like All right. so, poo on your parade. No, 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 no. And, and, and <laughs> part of it is it, part, part of this is setting expectations because yeah. the other thing that I wanted to talk about when we came up with earlier is we haven't had any discussion of the rural um of of this concept of looking at the rural the rural district um in a more both holistic but more more nuanced way, mm -hmm. and and that feels like we're getting behind the eight ball here. Yeah, we'll get there. Well, well, hopefully, Mr. Chairman, we'll get so. Um, I just wanted to say that, that those were my questions for for this yeah. zoning board. It's been a slow couple of months. Um, uh, the one comment I'd have is we continue to have the a lot of the R two district um, is was platted out in the fifties and sixties with what are now completely non conforming lot sizes. And the um, the the setback limits for R two reflect a sort of idealized vision of what a R two plot looks like, which doesn't exist in Scarborough. So um, when we finally get to the residential residential districts, I'd like to put on the table to look at setbacks or look at the means by which um, uh, setbacks apply to um, uh, a legacy districts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, thank you. Um. So. Uh, um... This week in Ordinance Committee, we talked about wetland standards. So we've been working with the Conservation Commission for about 14 months, uh, getting to a point where we're ready to go to council in November with a proposal for a 25-foot setback to wetlands that includes a 15-foot vegetated buffer. We continue to get a lot of pushback from developers, even though we had a roundtable meeting where they were on board with that proposal. Um, but it is really important that we get ahead of this and so I'm hoping for a positive outcome at council and then a completely different topic we talked about um, mobile food vendors and so that was seemed well received we only had one response to our survey overall I did a zoom meeting that was available for public and no one attended except staff so that's out there if anybody wants to see any information but that's moving to council on November 6th as well um other things that are in the pike, our open space master plan is moving along really good. We had our um, vulnerability assessment meeting. We're doing a vulnerability assessment, a townwide transportation plan, and a master uh, open space. So that's one we don't over commit to many <laughs> yeah, yeah. things. Um, uh, but well. everything's moving along as has expected. The transportation plan draft will be reviewed on the 22nd. Yep. Hopefully we'll wrap that up. Um, that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Porsche. Nothing for me. I mean, other than we're involved in transportation plan yep. readers also. Uh, yep. All right. Rick? Nothing to add. Judy? All right. Um, I have a couple things. One, I saw a memo go by where there, um, there was a discussion being held about enforcing term limits. Right. And that there would be impact to all the committees. Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, although I might not be correct, I think Rick and I have one year left. Right. You finish fun. out your existing term and yes. then you would term out. You could skip a year and then come back. Yep. <laughs> Wait, you say I have one year left. Does that mean you, you finish oh, out three your year term? So their term is not up until 2025. So they okay. can finish out their existing term. And then if you have already served essentially nine years, then you term out. Yep. And you have to take a year off. Yep. Is that the end of 25 or? Yes. The end of 25. 
By the way, just to let you know, the zoning board, we, I mentioned that, mm -hmm. um, and got a blank look from Doreen and, uh, and uh, Brian. So, yeah, they don't always look to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, we, we've got a couple. No, I, long yeah, I think you have a couple. Yeah. yeah so, okay. It's, yeah. yeah, sorry. I'm assuming, he, I'm, I'm sorry. So, no, I, my only comment is that it's going to be unfortunate that the people with the most experience on this committee are both leaving on the same time. Mm, correct. That's we're seeing that across a lot of our committees yeah. and some expertise so, to um to more technical committees that yeah. I, I, I do think this requires more conversation with the council. I don't know if it's something we will figure out with this council, but I could see this being something the next appointments in negotiations committee you want to take up and reflect. Like I've always felt like in my mind, I'm I'm supportive of the notion of term limits, but at the same time, if nobody applies and you guys are still interested, I would hate to say you can't continue because you know there aren't yeah. other applicants. So um I think it's probably worth continuing the conversation. I think it was it actually went really quick and in retrospect. I I wish we would have engaged the committees in that conversation and it 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 started in like February and then got picked back up in June or later and then it got to council. I think it just moved too quick in retrospect. And I think we owe it to our volunteers to kind of continue the conversation, figure it out. So at least from my perspective, while it's currently is what it is, I would like to make sure that we pick that conversation back up. Yeah. I, I, it, Transition plan. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Move. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and no reflection at all on the people on this committee. It's just that there is value yeah. to oh, long term absolutely. knowledge. Right. So, we don't want to lose our institutional yeah. knowledge. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's fair enough. But I also think it would be good too to like, and I think this was why I supported it, was there's so many committees that this group in particular would benefit being on as well. So it doesn't preclude you from joining other committees. Other committees. Yeah. No, nope, it just I get means it. you your time on this one uh, you know, needs some time off to bring in some other perspectives, but you can apply again the next year. Yep. And come back again for nine yep. years. So again, no question. I'm not I was a, a light yes when I voted for it. <laughs> and so that's where I'm like, I feel like there's more work to do. I don't know yeah. what that is, but I'm at least committed to talk to the counselors to see if we can iron some of this out a little bit more and maybe include the committees in that conversation. John, just okay. just some feedback. Going back on the nomination and uh, appointments committee um, uh, website, it was really spotty, the um, the uh, the links to prior meetings. So it was really hard, and even getting minutes and things like that. So I'm not sure if that's a technical issue or whether it's or someone needs to talk to the, the folks who are uh, facilitating that committee. Um, me as a member of the public, I, I couldn't go back and reconstruct the discussions that might have taken place around that, either through minutes or through um, a, a Zoom link because it just wasn't available. Yeah, and so, that's tough for like new members, right? When they yeah. want to get up to speed and learn. Damn and right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so it's, it's real, especially for that committee where they're engaging to bring new people into the into in, into the fold. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important that that, that um, of, uh, online record and that public record be yeah. up to date. And I was interested in housing alliance yeah. and couldn't mm -hmm. get anything. Yeah. No yeah. agendas, no past meetings, nothing. Well, maybe that's something Autumn we can bring back to Tom and staff about if there's probably a need for consistency. And I think every, at least for me, because I'm on a lot of things, like I've always been able to find what I need. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think also there's an issue um, uh, on the use of the, of the, 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 the Google file system. Mm -hmm. um, my guess is I get a lot of links saying I'm I don't have access because I don't have a Google a, a valid Google on mm -hmm. login. Um, there are others that simply just never post, which is that which is a different problem. But so I would appreciate it if you could bring it up with Tom and Sat and and Otto if you could do the same. Just to again, it's it's important that we are as transparent as possible for the public, mm -hmm. and it's important that we're transparent so we know what we're doing. Um, yeah. So uh, so selfishly as a committee, it would be good to know. So yeah, those links are really spotty at best so yeah uh the last item that i have is i will be having surgery coming up in november uh, so i could be a little hit or miss on some of these meetings okay. just because when it comes to pt and stuff like that i don't have a lot of 
and blood. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, really. right. Good luck. So I'm being yeah. told when the show. Gotcha. What's what's being replaced? Uh, me. Good luck. <laughs> so yeah, you might be busy. Um, I, I could be. Yeah. <laughs> I could be. So just kind of a heads up. You're not going to so, hobble in here. <laughs> well, I, as long as I yeah. can. Exactly. So outside of that, that's the last item our, on our agenda is a motion to adjourn. So we have a first and a second, Rick. Uh, discussion, Rick. No. Oh, jumping ahead, voting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. Uh, I see that being Thank you very much. Thank Next you. meeting is.